galaxy in motion. Spinning and spinning, it began to change shape. The clump became a disk. As it spun, the galaxy flattened into a sheet of stars, proportionally thinner than any crust you could ever create. That's how our galaxy got its shape. And took its place among 100 billion other galaxies in our visible universe. The galaxies are a zoo. They're big ones, fat ones, small ones, skinny ones, distorted ones, ones that look like train wrecks. The Milky Way galaxy itself is extremely flat. Not unusual in its flatness, but it's extremely flat. And it's got a sort of bulgy shape in the middle. We call it the bulge. And uh, it looks kind of like a fried egg, except it's thinner than a fried egg. And w what I'm referring to the thickness is the distribution of stars within it. It's like a platter and it rotates, it has spiral structure. If you could see the Milky Way from afar, it would look like this. A vast assembly of suns swirling around the center. So immense, it takes a beam of light 100,000 years to cross it. Still, it reminds astronomers of something closer to home. A city with its neighborhoods, and its bustling center. Our tiny solar system can be found on the outskirts. We live in the suburbs of the galaxy, uh, not in the center where the population density is very high. We live about two-thirds of the way out in the disk. There are other regions where stars are being born, stars are dying. It's quite a rich assortment of neighborhoods. Out where we are, it takes a star 300 million years to orbit the Milky Way. But as you move toward the center, the pace quickens. As you go towards the center of our galaxy, the stars become closer together. The buildings get closer and closer together. If you were to think about a city, the downtown of a city compared to the suburbs. The strength of the magnetic fields go up. The winds that um, stars give off get, get more extreme. Everything just becomes more fast-paced. Entering the great central bulge, the galaxy gets more chaotic. Stars orbit erratically, living and dying at a furious pace. Here, amid clouds of gas and radiation. Surely, there is no life. The explosions that go on, the, the colliding systems that take place, the, the fact that you have gravity, the tidal forces of gravity that rip apart star clusters. I try to imagine what it would look like. It would be ablaze with light. There is much more in the galactic center than busy intersections. Deep within, hidden by a shroud of dust and blinding light, looms a titanic object. Not a star, but a true cosmic monster. No one knows exactly how it got here, or the full dimensions of its gravitational power. But this much is sure. In time, it will determine the fate of the galaxy. High atop Hawaii's Mauna Kea volcano, a group of scientists is tracking something strange at the center of the galaxy. The bizarre behavior of a pack of large stars crowded closely together. These stars are accelerating wildly, slingshot forward at fantastic speeds. There's the stars. I don't believe you. Wow. <laughs> These stars are moving at three million miles per hour. 
does that, I mean, these speeds are so, hard, so much higher than we can comprehend. Only one thing could be responsible for this unusual motion, the primal power of gravity. It's the force that created our solar system, and yet also forged realms so dark and mysterious they are beyond our imagination. On Earth, gravity is the familiar force, the one that keeps our feet on the ground. No one knows it quite like Joe Kittinger. Since 1949, this man in the red bandana has carved out a niche for himself in the sky, defying gravity and setting record after record in flight. As one of the original U.S. Air Force test pilots, he had the right stuff before anyone else. Joe's specialty? Going where no man has gone before. Kittinger was the first man to balloon solo across the Atlantic. He completed more high-altitude balloon flights than anyone in history. Heights don't bother me at all. Uh, I love it from up here. He led the way into space itself. In the days before the astronauts, Kittinger was part of an Air Force team studying the effects of high altitude on the human body. At 32 years of age, he was chosen for a very dangerous mission. You've tried to anticipate everything that could happen. Uh, you train for all the emergencies, but there's always the unknown element. So if a pressure suit fails, you die uh, very quickly. If the stabilization system didn't work, uh, there's a good chance you're gonna die also. That day, August 6th, 1960, Kittinger's job was to rise all the way into the stratosphere. Three hours after takeoff, his balloon finally cleared the 100,000 foot mark. Kittinger became the first human to look back on the Earth from this altitude. And then I had 46 different things I had to do to make the jump. The last item was to stand up, say a prayer, and hit one button to start the last cameras going and then jump overboard. And then, he stepped into the void. Kittinger would free fall for 20 miles. Four and a half minutes of pure adrenaline. It was the highest parachute jump ever. Pulled by gravity, he became the first man to accelerate beyond the speed of sound without a vehicle. Gravity is the attraction of two bodies in space. In this case, Joe at 190 pounds, the Earth at six billion trillion tons. In the scheme of things, Joe's ride down was gentle. For out in space, gravity can get really extreme. Albert Einstein once imagined a class of objects with such intense gravity that nothing, not even light, escaped their grasp. 
He called.